What is going on ladies and gentlemen, it is I, Randy, with RTS Mobile Gaming, bringing you a fantastic video today. We are playing Sea of Conquest, and this is a very fun naval ship builder slash base builder type game. Uh, it's got really intriguing PvP where you can run alongside people, broadside them, and sink them, which is fantastic. Uh, so let's talk real quick about my flagship setup in this particular game, okay? I'll be doing a video that covers each one of my major ships and their setup in the next week, so get excited for that. Like and subscribe if you feel like this has been useful. Flagships are super important, okay? Uh, because you need your flagship to live. If your flagship gets sunk in PvP or PvE, and the rest of your ships are still alive with half health, you have basically left a ton of potential damage on the table because your flagship gets sunk and your whole fleet loses the fight, okay? So you want your flagship to survive. Now, why am I making my flagship this tanky? Besides that, um, the next reason is while many ships have offensive damage bonuses, oh, I'm exiting the raid here, while many ships have offensive damage bonuses such as the Warhammer or the Fearless Prince, okay, uh, your flagship does not have any offensive abilities to augment stacking it with attack type troops. If you stack it with uh, strength based heroes, with attack type gear, you are not going to see the same multiplicative return as if you were getting additional damage multipliers on your ships um, from these additional bonuses, right? Like the uh, Fearless Prince is going to give you a 20% bonus to strategic damage. It's immense. It's going to give you another 7% bonus to your ship's attack, okay? So, um, it's going to make a lot more sense to put damage uh, dealing heroes and gear on the ships that will multiply them, all right? So because of that, it makes the most sense to make your flagship incredibly tanky. That way you can't get sunk and you can use the multiplicative damage bonuses on your other ships to their maximum potential, okay? Now, Ahab is almost a must-have on a flagship. You could use another hero if you don't have Ahab. However, Ahab at even the base summoning two stars without any strengthening here, okay, because when you summon a hero, they come in with two stars. Even at two stars, you are going to gain a shield for your flagship that can go up to 11%, and you're going to get a shield for your other ship at 3%, okay? So he will be giving an immense damage mitigation shield uh, across the board. What does that look like with my current HP pool? Okay, uh, since I have 3.158 million HP. The 11% of that is going to be, let's get out the calculator because you know me, okay, 3, 1, 5, 8, 800 times 0.11. That is a 347,000 damage shield on my flagship. It is going to be very hard for an enemy to peel through that shield within the 5 second duration. So unless I'm fighting multiple opponents, I'm probably not going to take any damage for the 5 seconds that the shield is up. Okay, this shield is going to be up every 12 seconds or so, depending on some gear and some of your hero's uh, abilities. It could be maybe dropped down to 10 seconds, but it's somewhere in the 10 to 12 second range. You'll be triggering this 5 second shield. Okay, so if you have great HP, you're going to be doing an immense amount of shielding. Next, you're going to want two additional high constitution heroes on your flagship. Okay. Uh, high Ed is a great option. I'm sorry, High Ed. Curse Ed is a great option here in Season 1 because we don't have a lot of gold heroes. Okay, Magnus is a VIP hero, so I'm going to talk about a replacement for Magnus in about three seconds here. Don't get ahead of yourself. Uh, but Curse Ed is great. You should be able to unlock him early in Season 1. You don't need to have him max starred. Really, uh, three star Ed, four star Ed is perfect. If you can get him to four stars instead of ten stars, totally fine. Okay, Ed is going to debuff the enemy ship and increase the damage it takes by 18%. This is immense. This is such a big advantage in combat. You must use him. Okay. In addition to that, he has a chance to reduce the enemy's uh, attack for 5 seconds based on passive attacking of his ship. So you will see pretty decent uptime on this passive uh, passivation debuff. So you're going to be reducing the enemy ship's attack, which is also really great, okay? And thirdly, he also has the ability, this is 
maybe his most valuable thing here. He has the ability to reduce enemy rage, which 14 rage is really not a lot. So I don't really care about that too much other than it might give you a slight advantage. But really what's important here is he can lengthen the school skill cooldown on the enemy heroes on the enemy ship. So he will lengthen the cooldown on whatever ship he applies his debuff to uh, pretty dramatically every time it takes damage. This will trigger once every five seconds. So you're going to see uh, over the course of a long fight, you may gain an additional one or two hero ultimates on each one of your ships compared to the enemy that's getting debuffed. So Curse Dead is great. The third option here is going to be Magnus for me. You get him at VIP 7. If you don't have VIP 7 and you want some other options, I'll talk about those in three seconds. Okay, but Magnus is great. He does a little bit of damage, not a whole lot. He increases the aggro, so it makes your flagship take more damage, which is also great. Pulls damage off your ships in PvE. Um, Bone Armor. Okay, he, three of his abilities trigger the Sinister Sanctuary, uh, which is great. It basically means that I'm going to take less damage on my ship. So this makes your flagship even tankier. And like I said, multiple abilities here trigger Sinister Sanctuary. Uh, in addition, if you have him at 3-star, um, you will be able to get this ability to shield three of your ships. Okay? Um, so you'll be shielding three of the, uh, the ships in your fleet. In addition to that, for every stack of Sinister Sanctuary, you will uh, be shielding yourself for more HP. And it's important to read this. This is based on the HP lost by Magnus' ship. So early on in the fight, his shield is not going to be doing a whole lot. However, if you're fighting against a stronger opponent and you're finding your HP is getting dropped down to half health, well, you're going to be shielding for, you know, 100,000 100, shielding on each ship, which is great. Okay? Alternative options. Do not put Madam Lulu on your flagship unless you have nothing else. She does have high constitution, but she has a heal that's based on attack. Okay? Do not put Cordelia on your flagship. Again, high constitution, but all of her abilities scale off ship attack, okay? So if you put on these two healers on your flagship, you are going to basically be cutting their balls off and reducing their healing by 60-70%, okay? So you might as well not use healers at that point. The other options you're going to want to put on your flagship are other things that either debuff the enemy or strengthen your own fleet. Some free-to-play options would be in Armstrong. Armstrong is going to dramatically reduce the damage that your flagship takes. It's going to increase the, uh, the aggro of your ship. This is very similar to some of Magnus's abilities, okay? She also gets a crazy amount of armor stacking for her ship, which makes it super strong, okay? And she reduces the damage received from basic attacks. So she basically has three different abilities that all increase your ship's survivability. She is a great gunner option, okay? And Curse Ed can move anywhere. He can, he can run with any role, right? <clears throat> the next option for free-to-play would be Django. Django is super strong as well, and he is going to increase the rage generation of your ship, okay, and your adjacent ships. He's also going to give a little bit of bonus attack, which you don't really care about, but basically he'll be increasing the rage of your entire fleet uh, by triggering this, and he'll be increasing the rage of your uh, three ships on your fleet by generating um, that through his ultimate, okay? So this can be really strong as a support um, and thirdly, if you don't have either one of them at a strong point, I would recommend using a drowning debuff or a blazing debuffer. Um, and Aline is really one of the best, okay? She is going to have a chance to basically stack drowning damage, uh, taking on water debuff on the enemy, okay? Which is going to be fantastic whenever she launches the basic attack, okay? Uh, and it's just going to add stacks of debuffs to the enemy. And eventually, if you're using the grounding gear, uh, the drowning gear set, or the blazing gear set, you could, in theory, uh, be debuffing the enemy pretty significantly. Okay, so those are the recommendations for your flagship's heroes. Let's talk about the gear really quick. This is also super important. Okay, uh, if you are in season one, your gear might be severely restricted because they added all this new gear in that has these set bonuses and only a few options on the base stats. Okay, uh, I believe they change this in the later seasons. But here in season one, let's talk about your optimization. Okay, first off, the weapon, no need to talk about that because all the weapons are the same. But you are going to be wanting to use Sovereign of the Sea set. This 15% armor 
and 18% HP is going to make you dramatically tankier. And since your ship isn't dealing any damage, right? Ahab deals no damage. Cursed Ed deals no damage. Your ship only auto attacks. So the only damage coming out of your ship is going to be your auto attacker. And if you're using someone like Eileen to debuff the enemy, she'll be dealing a small amount of damage as well. But it's not a strength-based ship, so no need to run attack gear, okay? On that same point, don't run critical strike chance. Don't run critical strike damage on your ship's figurehead. Make sure you are running critical resistance or armor or HP. One of those buffs is going to be super important, okay? And again, your options are limited here in Season 1. If you were able to get some of the gear before they nerfed uh, the drops to that, those fixed things, maybe you have um, some armor bonus here. I'm currently using the critical resistance, okay? Same thing for the helm. There's not a lot to say about the helm. You don't really care about the helm. In fact, I should change to a higher level helm that I dropped yesterday. Um, really, you just care about the base armor and the HP bonus and the armor bonus, which is going to go up as your uh, level requirement for the item goes up. Okay, and finally, the sail, all right? The sail is super duper important. You want to be running with an HP bonus sail. You could run with an armor bonus sail, but... Since you have three Constitution heroes on your flagship, HP bonus is the most valuable stat on your flagship, okay? On the other ships that are strength-based, armor is highly competitive with HP and its effectiveness. You can sort of mix and match that with some more freedom. On your flagship, with three Constitution-based heroes, they multiply the Constitution's bonus by 0.2%. So if you have you know, 100 constitution, you're going to be looking at 2% uh, 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 of an HP bonus from that, okay? So it multiplies with your other HP bonuses on your items based on your constitution. My ship's constitution right now is looking at, uh, what do I have here? 4,729. So point two of that, right? 4,729 times 0 0.02, because that's the percentage, right? Oops, I clicked the wrong button. I'm gonna just, four, seven, two, nine times 0 0.2. All right, uh, so essentially it is going to be 94% of an HP bonus, 94.58% HP bonus for my constitution on this ship, multiplied by my HP bonus, here multiplied by my mace HP and that is going to give me the health points for my ship. It's a direct multiplicative equation. Okay, so higher constitution means that your HP bonus is actually more valuable and your base HP per sailor is more valuable. These are all super duper key. They all work together. If your constitution is much lower, like on my damage ship here, you will see why there's uh, I'll be getting barely half of the effectiveness, barely 60% of the effectiveness out of my HP bonus compared to the flagship, okay? So the flagship is getting enormously greater benefits for increasing HP percent. And that is how you gear your ship, folks. If you don't have an HP bonus sale, like I said, you could, in theory, maybe use armor. Uh, it's not going to be the worst thing you ever did, but you're sort of giving up this opportunity to have an immense multiplicative damage, uh, I mean, uh, damage, an immense multiplicative health uh, advantage on your flagship. And that is how we roll, folks. Other than that, getting more armor is always great. So you, if you can get more armor as some of the substats, please get more armor. It will reduce the damage you take as well. And that is how you gear your flagship, ladies and gentlemen. Please like and subscribe if you have enjoyed this video. Bandy out.